Can you, can you give me some? Okay, this morning I'm going to introduce myself first. I'm Christine Lee Taylor, friend of Jim Taylor's. And um, I'm an Episcopal priest. I'm retired. I'm from Northern California. And I want to share with you one of the things that we do in Episcopal churches. It's the only Episcopalian thing we're going to do today. Okay? I'm not trying to impose Episcopal uh, ritual on you, but Sharon knows what to do. So whenever, if you all start gabbing with yourselves, if, if you just pretend you were, and yeah, yeah, they, they, that, that sort of thing, and then I say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. That's right, okay. <laughs> That's our way of getting attention, okay? So if I ever do that, you know, the Lord be with you. You're very quick learners. Okay, let's do our opening hymn. Welcome to Winfield United. No matter where you're in this service, online at home or with us in this sanctuary, no matter who you are, no matter where you are in your faith journey, you are welcome here. This a safe community to support and encourage you on that journey. So I have an acknowledgement. Do I just read it? Okay. As we gather in this place, we acknowledge and remember that we are standing on the traditional ancest ancestral territory of the Silix Okanagan people. We are grateful for their stewardship of this land and its resources and for their teachings about the sacredness of this land. So, um, this is, is my thing cutting out? Yes, it's cutting out. Should I just use my own voice? No? <laughs> just pretend, Christina. Just pretend. Just pretend. Okay. Yeah. Let's just. <laughs> now I'm dressed. Okay. All right. Do we have guests that, to introduce this morning? Good. And she sings beautifully. Sings really oh, good, good. Um, you want to do a solo? <laughs> we have anybody else? I just want to say that Alan, welcome to Alan Wildwood. He's here from Nova Scotia. He's been here to preach last week, and he's been here many times before, but I just wanted to point that out. 
Okay. I met him last week. Hi. Yeah, and uh, more people here than you, Jack. That's amazing. <laughs> um, anybody else? Um, we have announcements about life and work of the church. Where were we last week, Sharon? Uh -huh. <laughs> Fort Collins. What were we doing then? Oh, amazing spiritual retreat with Neil Douglas Klotz. He does, he's the Aramaic scholar and... Um, and his partner, Tasneem, from, actually, she's, she's from, from California, Mex but yeah, yeah. Mexico. Anyway, they, they um, organized the Dances of Universal Peace. They carried it on from Samuel Lewis, who started it back in the 60s, I guess. It's uh, using sacred phrases from all of the faiths. Uh, and we do a simple circle dance, and it was extremely powerful, transformative. I'll let Fran talk now. Think, <laughs> think about the grapevine dance. Think about taking one step, you know, one step to the right. Like, it's their simple steps. The whole Dances of Universal Peace started 30 or 40 years ago and has spread around the world. And so Neil Douglas was just uh, in South America. They had three to 400 people gathering. With us, there were 85 people in a hall smaller than this. And how it started in the center were the musicians. And so there was a drum and a couple of guitars and sometimes a flute and the two teachers. And then all of a sudden, people would start walking quietly, attuning. It's a whole practice of attunement. And so now you've got 85 people walking around in a circle. It's not the bell that says, okay, people, we're ready to go. <laughs> it's this attunement. So it started, um, Neil, uh, Samuel Lewis went to India. He, he's got a very long story. There's lots of trouble in his story and lots of uh, journey to find the way and the truth. And so some of that is from India. So we ended up dancing Sanskrit and in Hebrew and in Aramaic and in Arabic. And so it's very touching to me that we can gather in this way and sing each other's sacred songs and in that way know that we love because God loves us. So I've been so, I've been there before, and this time um, I have been in touch. I want to be a mentor. I want to be able to lead these dances. So far I can lead them in Aramaic. Um, there is not any dances happening in the Okanagan. So the nearest dances are in Vancouver for us or Nelson. And so lots of people. I wonder, has anybody here done, been part of, okay. Yes, Arlene, yes, yeah, both Arlene's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because when I asked that, there were dances happening in Vernon way back when, and so hopefully it'll bring us back together again, and so, yes. And so we're starting tomorrow again with the Aramaic, and we already did the Beatitudes, and so we're starting again so every Monday morning, you are welcome. You don't have to know this. And we will move to two of the Beatitudes. They're very simple. And then if you want to stay, we can do the Aramaic Qigong. So this is a welcome to everybody. This is not, oh, I don't know it, or oh, I can't move. There were people with us who had mobility issues. They sat on the side, and they just imbibed all of it. And so... As we do this together, we can reach out in peace. The invocation is to the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty. Okay. Mm, yes. Thank you. <laughs> we had fun. <laughs> Other announcements? Um, well, we have this plant sale. Somebody want to talk about that? Somebody did last week. Well, I think that um, 
pots are. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, Sandy's not here. So, um, as I said last week, uh, we're starting to get everything together for the plant sale on the 11th of May. So, please mark that on your calendar. If you have anything going on in your garden, our weather is beautiful. I know we're all out there at some point during the day. So if you have larger items that you're trying to downsize, pot them up, bring them that week uh, prior. I don't know what the dates are, Sharon, do you? May 11th. Yeah, but the week before. That, so from the 6th to the, the 10th, basically, you can drop off whatever you'd like to. If you have lawn, and garden ornaments that you're getting tired of. They still have life left in them and you want to change them up and you've bought something new, bring the old ones and let us share them with somebody else in the community. So May the 11th, we're going to have our plant sale. There will be hot dogs for sale outside so you can also have lunch while you're here. Thank you. Any other announcements we need to include? Okay then, Doug, would you help me with, I just don't know where the matches are. <laughs> well, I don't know that either, so maybe. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess it's go. one of these. Here we are. Okay. You can light it for me, okay? Go ahead. As we gather together this morning, we light this candle. Around the world, Christian communities are also lighting candles to remind all of us that as our lives have been brightened by the light and love of Jesus, we are called to bring light into places of darkness and despair. We are all on a journey, and we ask for open hearts and minds to receive what we need as we go forward into this new day. So our opening prayer, no, I, I'm going to just, uh, the God of be with you, delighting you with thunder and bird song, sunrise and flower, enchanting your senses, oh, For seeing the ways new life springs forth in the humble and majestic. Amen. Okay. My soul cries out, I think. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my wanted sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight. My weakness you did not spurn. From my east to west shall my name Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you will work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears from the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. 
May the words of my mouth and the blessings of our, all our hearts, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. We are progressing through the seven weeks of Eastertide. Last week, Jim Taylor talked about how Bible stories never end, even though the Bible itself has a finite number of books. This week, I'd like to focus on how we interpret resurrection, which is what Easter is all about. One of the biblical accounts of Jesus' resurrection, which was read in many places on Easter this year, is from the Gospel of Mark, the earliest and the shortest gospel. So in the original ending, two women go to the tomb on the first day of the week, that is three days after Jesus' crucifixion, and they are astounded to find it Empty, empty. An angelic figure inside the tomb tells them that Jesus is not there. That he has gone ahead of them to Galilee and they will see him there. But according to this gospel, the women are so afraid that they say nothing to anyone. That's now, It leaves one with the distinct question that somebody surely had to have said something. Otherwise, how would we know about Jesus today? Now, in John's Gospel, Mary Magdalene sees someone she mistakes as a gardener outside the tomb. But when he calls her by name, she recognizes him and answers, Rabuni or Rabbi. Now, Matthew's and Luke's Gospels, their versions are kind of somewhere in between these two. But Matthew adds, anybody remember what he adds to the tomb scene? An earthquake. He's, he's got to be more dramatic about it. Okay. Then, three of the Gospels add post-resurrection stories. So let's hear what Luke has to say in a portion of the gospel reading that's appointed for today. Luke 24, 36b to 48. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. So for some people, these accounts, thank you, Kim, of Jesus' bodily presence offer proof of his physical resurrection. Alternatively, some disciples sensed and felt Jesus' presence, and that empowered them to continue his ministry of forgiveness and healing. On Easter, Bob Thompson talked about his experiences in thin places where a spiritual power such as the presence of Jesus, was palpable and transformative. An excellent example of this is recounted in the third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, when Peter and John were going up to the temple to pray at three in the afternoon. As they did, a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him every day at the gate of the temple the one called the beautiful gate, so that he could ask for charity from those who were entering. Here's how the story is told. Acts 3, 3 through 10. When the man born lame saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. 
and he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately the lame man's feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And then the rest of the story is told in another of the appointed readings for today. That part wasn't among the readings, but I, it, you need to hear it to make sense of it. Okay, go ahead, Kim. Acts 3, 12 through 19. Peter then addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or walk, or why do you stare at us, as though by your own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself, has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Thank you. So here we see the reality of resurrection at work. Peter and John are not claiming their own power or piety to heal. They are relying on God's power, something they witnessed and learned to count on as disciples of Jesus. I particularly like the note that Peter offered his hand to the lame man, helping or encouraging him to stand. And you can feel the man's utter thrill to be able to walk and to even jump. He had a new life. I believe that resurrection simply means new life. How many ways can you imagine new life being manifested? A change of heart? That's certainly new life. So is a new mission that utilizes your special God-given gifts. And so is a release from life-deadening fear. One aspect of resurrection that we often get wrong is that it is not a one-time event. In fact, in an, as an article asserted in the magazine Broadview, you, any of you read this? Okay. Yeah, it's your magazine. <laughs> uh, and which, is, which used to be The Observer that was published by the United Church. Resurrection, or resurrections, plural, might be as ordinary as the sunrise. The author, Sarah Bessie, writes, I once dreamed of a big God with big plans. Now I've learned to embrace the resurrections of everyday life. I think resurrection can be thought of as any metaphor for a new beginning. And it can be totally real and physical. I witnessed what I perceived as an example of a slightly grander resurrection two weeks ago. It was captured in a video that I happened to come across on my cell phone. See, they can be useful sometimes. <laughs> Three people placed a large cage, quite big, uh, on a high mountain cliff, and they opened the door to the cage and out waddled a very large bird. Uh, it might have been a raptor of some sort or maybe a California condor. As soon as it was free and had room, it spread its enormous wings like this. Okay. And, and it must have spanned eight or 10 feet. And with those grand wigs, 
wings spread wide open, uh, the bird paced to the right and looked out, and it paced to the left, stopped and looked. Actually, I was looking at the bird from the back, so it was going like this. <laughs> but I won't, I won't ask you to look at my butt. <laughs> so uh, it paced, it kept pacing back and forth about 10 or 12 times along the crest of that mountain. And it never once pulled its wings in. Wings were out the whole time. And um, it was as if the bird didn't know if it remembered how to fly. Or perhaps it had never flown before. Maybe it was raised in captivity. Did it dare try its wings? Anyone watching that video, like me and the people who had brought the bird out there, had to be rooting for it. Finally, finally, the bird let itself just kind of jump into the air. And that magnificent creature disappeared below the mountain crest and disappeared from sight for a few seconds. And then it emerged soaring away in the distance. It was just marvelous. So trying our wings testing our wings, spreading our wings. Those are metaphors that we use to express a desire to escape from the old, the routine, the fearful ideas that we tell ourselves, and to instead trust in God's unfathomable love for us. Where is resurrection waiting to be revealed to you? This Easter tide or any day, any day. What have you been afraid to try or to experience? Where might resurrection be waiting to happen in this congregation? Are you resisting or are you ready? I want to see myself in that beautiful bird waiting for the right gust of wind to carry me into new life. Sometimes we can't tell if we are already soaring into some new realms or if we are on the precipice of leaping. Perhaps we will know when we've landed on a new perch. In the meantime, while I'm ready to soar into newness, I can only rejoice in how God's abundance of love brings fresh ideas and experiences into what was routine. So where can you let yourself go and soar into new life, knowing that you are precious in God's care? That, I believe, is resurrection. Jesus is alive in us and all around us. And that's worth an alleluia. 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 Amen. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is take a couple of minutes of um, meditation. And while um, Elaine is playing, uh, I invite you to consider where or how you might be wanting to spread or try your wings or share some other God moments, okay?
would like to start? You can come forward or we can give you a mic. Sometime when you want to try your new wings or are you recognizing the fear that's holding you back or some other God moment? Go ahead. Um, I have literally spread my wings because I booked a flight to Edmonton to visit my chosen sister and um, I haven't done that in years. Good for you. Was that scary? Well, I recently flew. I flew. I flew recently, so oh, it okay. kind of broke the ice. Okay. But not to Edmonton. Okay. <laughs> Somebody has to be spreading your wings. Oh. Where? Oh, Elaine. It's not exactly spreading my wings. I've done it for years and years and years. But I was really afraid this year that I was not going to be able with my back issue to plant my garden. Yesterday, I planted a row of peas. <laughs> and I'm really relieved that it looks like I'm going to be able to get the seeds in. John might have to do all the weeding, though. <laughs> Who else? I know you're a courageous bunch. Well, I'm not sure uh, it's about spreading wings, but it was certainly God moments. Mm -hmm. um, we returned from about three weeks in Kauai. Oh. This, we just got back this weekend, and we had um, two of our grandchildren with us for, for six days, and watching them spread their wings, doing things they hadn't done before, like learning to surf, mm -hmm. and um, uh, being like that bird, they they chose as their special trip to take a helicopter ride oh. over Kauai. And for those of you who have been there, um, for us it's a very thin space, a very spiritual place. And, and at least two-thirds of the island uh, has never had footprints on it, except mm. probably a few goats and, and a lot of chickens have, have been there. Um, but they wanted to do the helicopter ride and float over all of Kauai, and they came back with the most amazing pictures and just awestruck. And it was so fun, and they wanted to take the helicopter with no doors on. <laughs> so um, it was a real adventure, and it was so wonderful for us to be sharing that. And that was the, the seventh of our nine grandchildren uh, the, well, the youngest one that was there that we've taken on a trip with us. And so we had many God moments over these last periods of time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Other God moments. Doesn't have to be about wings. Doesn't have to be about fear. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, um, some of you... I've told that I'm trying to build a kayak. And my mood varies from day to day. One day I'm convinced this is going to be an absolute disaster and I will put it out on the water and all the pieces will fall apart and I will sink. <laughs> and other days I look at it and I think, this is going to be beautiful. Christine has been helping me with it, and I can't do it by myself. But it's, uh, the, the, the whole thing was an exercise in, in spreading my wings. I, I had never tried building something like this before. And whether it works or not, it's been worth the effort. Thank you. Is it Brenda? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, this is about spreading my wings and possibly the biggest fears of making errors in judgment. But my children live in Calgary and my grandsons are grade two and three and I miss seeing them um, do the things that they do every day that is so exciting for them like playing hockey or baseball or, or gymnastics or whatever they are doing. And my daughter last year wanted me to move there to be closer. I have two daughters there actually and uh, both have families. One has dogs and the other one has their two boys. <laughs> I spend a lot of time traveling from Saskatoon to visit them and I found that this last year I was going to Calgary every month and back and then I drive to visit my mom and her early husband who has been very sick with chronic illnesses and he passed away about three weeks ago. But um, so my mom's on her own and she was caregiving him at 83. She was helping him to the washroom and he couldn't walk anymore and he needed meds certain times. So her wings are now allowing her to have some relaxation. But um, so I'd like to see her more as well, but I've been trying, traveling there from Saskatoon to Lloydminster twice a month. So in the, in the end, I'm thinking, now maybe should I move to Calgary? Because my daughter wants me to spend more time with my mother, who um, lives in Lloydminster, and has my two brothers and lots of other people there for her. But she's never been to visit my kids' homes in Calgary. But there's really nowhere for her and I to sleep at someone's house. So I'm on the verge of looking again for building or buying a, a condo in Calgary so that I don't have to travel that much. Maybe can get my mother and bring her for a few days, but she can stay with me instead of having to drive back and forth. So I'm fearful, but maybe I'll spread, spring my, <laughs> spread my wings and fly pretty soon. <laughs> Those are big steps. Huge, yes. <clears throat> Anybody Any, else? Anybody else? Well, I think we are this is just a little closing meditation. I, I, I will say um, that today is my, my second son's birthday. He's 51 today, so I sent him a, an email. I'd already sent him a package, but, um, you know, you have to say happy birthday on the day, right? Okay, so. When we come to the edge of the light, of all the light we have, and we must take a step into the darkness of the unknown, we must believe one of two things. Either we will find something firm to stand on, or we will be taught to fly. That's for you. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a um, minute for mission. Who is doing that? Huh? On eagle's wings? Are we doing that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to sing a song on eagle's wings. I will raise. 
That was lovely. <laughs> okay, now we have a minute for mission. Okay. The Association of Economic and Social Development, Santa Marta, ADES, a mission and service partner, is located in an area of Central America that is very vulnerable to climate change. This hot, dry region regularly experiences drought. Mining projects have also negatively affected the environment and the people in the region. ADES and other community organizations decided to act to protect the community's right to a healthy environment. An example of how ADES has responded is a three-year agroecology project co-funded by the Manitoba Council for International Cooperation and the United Church of Canada Foundation along with mission and service. Agroecology benefits the land and water because it recycles nutrients back into the soil. It also reduces production costs, lessening the financial burden on rural farmers. In this project, ADES works closely with the community to grow food in a rural region of El Salvador, promoting sustainable agriculture that protects biodiversity, maintains the integrity of the land, and upholds rural culture. At the center of the project is the Dora Alicia Sorto School Farm, where rural families, mainly led by women, learn about agroecology. The school provides training, technical expertise, and seeds indigenous to the region. It focuses on preserving the surrounding environment and on upholding gender and human rights as part of its approach to food security. Your gifts to mission and service help support ADES Agroecology Project. Thank you for your generosity. Do we have an offering song? Bring the offering box up. Okay. It's time for us to uh, offer our prayers for each other and people we love. We pray for ourselves, for the forgiveness of our mistakes and misgivings, for those we love who are facing challenges, for this nation, and for all peoples of the world, for all of God's creation, and for those we love but see no longer. I invite your prayers.
This morning, I really want to uh, encourage prayers for my son and his wife, my daughter and her husband, and my grandson, all of whom are coming here, my son and daughter from, uh, from Texas, my daughter from Calgary, because we are going to celebrate my son's 70th birthday on May the 3rd. I offer or ask your assistance in prayer in making their journey a safe one, and also that my wife rallies enough to thoroughly enjoy their visit, and I thank you. Thank you. Other prayers? I would just ask your prayers that my son who continues to make very poor choices develop a brain um, or at least connect his frontal lobe to the rest of his brain and maybe if we all pray really hard some of that will happen thank you okay This morning I ask for prayers and support through and I pray for you too. <laughs> through the journey that my nephew is on right sure. now. He is he is in a very, very deep depression following uh, the collapse of his marriage. And he's suicidal and is being cared for by a team in Calgary. But um, he, his, you know, his life reminds me of Robin Williams, because all of his, all of his life, he's always been the one to make f people feel better through his laughter and through his uh, being a big, a big, wonderful, goofy clown. So yeah, it's it's hard to be this far away from him, but um, he's got he's got a lot of support. Anyone else? Of course, the prayers of our hearts are all known to God, so um, whether they're spoken or silent, they are still valid. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we're going to have um, the Maori prayer, earth prayer. Please join me. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all. Who in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name, echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our earth and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. We have a hymn. The Lone Wild Bird.
please join me in our closing prayer. As we go, we will count our blessings, embody our faith, 